All over the world, death has been an integral part of life, a sign of its end. And just as life starts, it was marked with spectacle. Many communities in the world have lost traditions, usually associated with the end of a person's time, but most African countries still hold up to the funeral practices of their forefathers. In Kenya today, most communities still practice funeral rituals, albeit under the heavy influence of religion. But even in similar religious sects, the specific burial steps are different depending on the specific community. In Western Kenya, for example, burial rituals are highly regarded, and that's why people from the region have stood out having interesting burial rituals integrated with the religious beliefs. This study takes a look at how some of these people, the Luo community, grieve and give send-off to the departed souls. Luos, like many other Kenyan tribes, believe in life after death. When a person dies, the soul is ever-present and it's only the body that is no more. Yeah, it is a term that loosely translates to a funeral in Thulu. Death is a very important part of life, and honoring the life of a departed person is held in high regard during the funeral. As per the Luo culture, the funeral ceremony constitutes three main parts. It should, however, be noted that the specific culture of the Luo people has also been greatly influenced by their geographical position around Namlulu, referred to as Lake Victoria by Europeans. And there might be different rituals from region to region. Uh, my name is Pamela Ogaga. So I'm going to talk about the Luos from South Nyanza, where I come from. The first stage is what happens when death occurs. Kelo Yuak. The term loosely translates to bringing wins. Kelo Yuak is, let's say that the person has died maybe in, a, in the hospital. So someone, they have had, they've gotten that information. And uh, see like long time, there were no phones or anything. So someone had to be sent physically. So go and tell that home, the, the, the particular home where the person has uh, died, that they have done what they have lost there person and so it's through wailing that others will get to know that there is bereavement in such and such a, a home and um, if for example if you are married uh, that is if you're a woman married from uh, uh, a different uh, area that is uh, and you get to hear that either your mother or your father is dead then you have to also do what wail from the place where you are married. Let's say you are married in Kisumu and uh, your home is um, in South Nyanza. So the moment you get to hear the news, you'll have to, to wail. And that will inform uh, others that uh, so and so has been bereaved. And so they'll come uh, to support you, uh, to console you, condole with you. And so you'll prepare and do what come uh, for the um, funeral of uh, whoever has died. So when you come, you also have to wail. So that is what is called Kelayua. After the acceptance that death has occurred, the second stage constitutes the burial arrangements. All the funeral arrangements are made by a collective agreement by the meeting organized by the close relatives referred to as Anyola. The Anyola decides whether the body is going to the morgue or preserved using traditional methods at home. When a person dies, as this person died in the homestead or in the hospital, so long time, if people died in the homestead, they would, they, their body would be preserved in the homestead. Uh, but nowadays, when someone dies um, in the homestead, they are taken to the um, nearest mortuary 
and then during the time the, the person is there, the, the community will continue um, mourning. With modern methods of preserving the dead, Luo funerals can take place one to even four weeks after the day of death. Most tribes in Kenya conduct their funerals after one week. The long grieving period is one of the things that make the Luo way of grieving stand out in Kenya. Mimi nasema hii kitu is chance sasa hii. Na mjua Luo wanafuata mila zao. Hiyo ni kitu walianza tangu nyuma na wachaacha. Mwenzao kikufa wanataka kila mtu huo anajipanga. Sio ile ya kuharakisha hata mtu atajipanga afike kwa hiyo matanga wanasema wanasika kesho. Kama ni sema kama kwetu kisi ni kikufa hawana shughuli kwa wataesa ngojea hata mwingine mwenye yako mbali ya kuji. Wataesa shika baada ya siku tano. Ikienda sana ipiti siku kumi. Lakini mchalo huo wanasikizana wanasema fulani ya chakuja, fulani ya chakuja, hii haichafanyika kwa utaratibu tu hawana haraka. Hawataki kusika mtu yao kama umbwa ni watu wanashika mtu kwa heshima kabisa hiyo ndio naelewa in the past when death had befallen a family members of the bereaved family would usually shave their heads to symbolize that they are in grief this tradition rituals was common among the nilots and even some bantus and it was aimed at showing a willingness to sacrifice beauty and part of yourself in honor of the departed loved ones a dead person was buried according to gender and the importance he or she had in society. Female children were buried two days after death. Male children and adult women were buried three days after death, while the adult males were buried four days after death. This was heavily dependent on the families involved. The third stage in the arrangement is the burial day. The Luo people of Kenya have quite interesting burial practices. Unlike other tribes, where the body of a dead person is transported from the morgue to the graveyard on the same day, a dead Luo person must first be brought home from the morgue a day prior to the burial date in what is referred to as Golo. From the time the body arrives home and spends the night awaiting the funeral the next day, many rituals usually take place. Joey is a term that uh, is like you are hailing somebody, you know. Uh, so there are some words that are used. Eh? Uh, like praising someone, Joey, Joey, Joey. At that time, it's usually done with men. Eh? Um, there's this whisk that they use. Eh? So they, 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 they um, actually use that to um, praise the person, eh? like hailing them, uh, like somebody who is uh, tough, who is strong, eh? yeah, who is powerful. Yes. Teroburu loosely translated to taking the dust away, given to men of high standing. Um, like, uh, when somebody died, like, if it is a man, then they would come with cows. Uh -huh. So many, many cows. So they would come and dance and eat, you know, like a feast. Uh -huh. Like, he would talk of maybe cleansing. Yes, yeah. In the olden days, status was shown by the number of cows that participated in the Teruburu ritual. These days, class is shown by how many people attend the funeral and how long the fleet of cars that accompany the dead person home is. It is here that rural people go the extra mile to hire expensive cars and in some cases even go ahead to hire professional mourners just to give the deceased a honorable send-off. Wao wanapenda mtu yao akikufa wanampenda na wataki kumshika kama mtu mwenye au kuwa na kimekana. Ni watu wako na heshima na mwenzao akikufa ni wanaelewa ni mtu yao na wao wanapenda sana kumshukulikia na kufanyia sherehe zote kulingana vile walikuwa wanamjua. Najua hivyo.
Disco Matanga. This is a very infamous ritual that is usually associated with the Western people of Kenya. The Disco Matanga is a term coming from discotheque and Matanga is a Swahili word for funeral. In the old days, night vigils were usually conducted on the eve of the burial day. Old men would sit the whole night while sipping on traditional booze and pouring libations to honor the dead person that was going to be buried the next day. Young people were also present during the night vigils and traditional music would be played and people would dance to keep the people awake during the night and also to celebrate and honor the life of the dead person. This is a very good thing. I was able to get a lot of people 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 to get a hapo katikati wakatafuta njia nyingine ambayo inaweza leta pesa ya kushika mwenzao. Mm. Uh, disco matanga um, is something that used to happen long time. However, even these days there are particular homes where it still happens. Where by somebody um, they bring um, the, the local musicians uh, just to perform. And uh, not even uh, live but even the, the discos, eh, whereby you have a DJ and is playing and the young ones would go and dance and that is where also a place whereby um, it was very common where boys and girls would meet and they would also uh, get relationships eh, connected. Um, the ritual became infamous over the years due to the rampant teenage pregnancies and insecurities after these events. Some disco matangas also used to have uh, uh, bad boys, of course, you can't miss in such places. And uh, a lot of chaos would also come with it. In the eyes of the old wise men, this was the way of life, as the pregnancies made sure that although one life was lost, many lives were got and the continuity of the lower people was ensured. It has really been fading out but at the same time also the aspect of Christianity so for some people uh, instead of doing the disco matanga they'd rather do the like praise and worship uh, bringing people who are singing the choirs and also doing what uh, bringing um, uh, music yes but the Christian music yes There are some unique practices that are admired by other communities that only the Luo people practice during grieving. This includes the fact that when death occurs, it has fallen on the community and not on an individual family. The community helps to cook and welcome guests, bring food and help the bereaved family with some tasks. It is the culture of Kanyakala. Or togetherness ni wa watu kwanza huwa wanapendana na mwenza wakati anakufa ni wakati ni kitu ambao kinawahusunisha sana na huwa wanakaa na kujadili hali vile watafika mtu yao kwa njia ambayo inaifaa na ya heshima uh, in terms of um, feeding which is done uh, uh, in most cases nowadays it's very organized whereby people come and, 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 and feed. Uh, in some communities they look at it like a uh, um, waste of funds. Eh? But for the Luos, uh, it's, we look at it like the person who has died, these people who have come, uh, they have come to give this person a send-off. Eh? And so we believe that for, if you have visitors, you give them uh, some 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 food yes so in the local community we believe that you are feeding the visitors of the person who has died yes. uh, the other thing that laws um, do well in is the fact that they view the body of the person who has died and that uh, bring uh, someone is able to come to terms with the fact that this person actually 
has died eh? because seeing is believing eh? because uh, in the process of uh, um, grieving you get into denial once somebody dies eh? and just viewing the body um, it's you are confirming that this person is actually dead and so um, being uh, for, for me being is is um, something that they're doing uh, they, they, it's something that is good at the same time uh, having to stay with the, the body overnight it's also another way of making someone get to terms uh, with the fact that this person really has died you know so someone can go and view all the time or even just seeing that body there it's confirmation to you and you're starting to process um, the loss and so also being um, uh, if, if you are allowed um, to be in that process uh, it also helps in um, coming to terms and also starting to process that loss and so the moment you get at the grave side and you're seeing this person being lowered into the grave i think that is very very important to um give you that uh sense uh, that this person actually we have buried him and he or she is not going to to come back it gives you closure so for me um, that is something that is um, important and positive to me. The traditional law of funeral practices has also had some, according to modern life, outdated practices. These practices like wife inheritance were common back in the day. Wife inheritance is one really outdated that needs to be done away with uh, because um, it's emotional, emotional torture uh, to the person who is being subjected to such kind of um, uh, practices. Uh, because the way it was being done before is that someone was being chosen for you to do it, uh, to inherit. Uh, however, these days, uh, a woman can choose. Uh, so, long time it had to be within the um, the clan. Uh, however, at uh, these days women are actually free, uh, though some homes are still strict on it, but it's slowly fading uh, in terms of choices and it's not really a must uh, because of Christianity. Uh, that is one important thing because long time they would look for somebody who is mentally ill Mm -hmm. because everyone feared this person that the, it was a bad omen you know, for any other man to be with this uh, woman and so they used to pick on who are mentally ill and of course what inheritance with the um, situation whereby there are other diseases like HIV AIDS eh? so to stop the spread of HIV AIDS just common knowledge that we need to get away from such tradition. Yeah. Like many other communities, the law of funeral practice in the modern age has not been spared from religious influence. Most families nowadays conduct funerals strictly according to Islam or Christianity. The traditional rituals have been thrown away. Christianity has really done a lot eh? in terms of uh, even changing the perspective um, of the, the law community when it comes to um, the, the rituals that used to take place uh, during the time of uh, bereavement. Um, the way of doing things has really, really uh, changed. And so that is something which is really, really uh, positive. Uh, because some of those rituals may not make sense um, to the current Luo population, eh? those who are the, the young ones, you know, uh, because they are different generations, and with different generations, there is change. And so Christianity has really done 
a, a lot of uh, change when it comes to that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 